Welcome back. As promised, we are here with the top 10 list of stocks that you need to watch out for. for. Our entire team is standing by for exactly that. Guys, a good morning to you. Uh, Sonia, we're not done with the auto stocks just yet, right? The last of the numbers trickling in. Hero also missing the mark? Yes, and by a margin, you know. So the, I'm going with red on Hero Motor Corp because they came out with their sales numbers yesterday well below what the street was estimating and barely any growth that we've seen in December. Just an indication that there is moderation in sales of two-wheelers that we're seeing, especially the ones that have an exposure to the rural market. So if you just look at it, in December 2023, they sold 3.93 lakh units. This is well below CNBC TV18's poll of 4.33 lakh units. And this is also slightly below what they did same time last year. Now, scooter sales are fine. There was marginal growth of around 5% in scooter sales. But the motorcycle sales have barely grown. In fact, not grown at all at just about 3.54 lakh units. But the management is quite optimistic in their uh, press release, as they generally are. They expect the positive momentum in sales Q4 onwards. And they say that the rural sentiment is picking up slightly. But I'm going with red because overall, uh, the sentiment in the auto space is that of profit taking. Okay, all right. Going with red on Hero Motor Car. But Manglam, DMART came out with, with its uh, operational update as well. How did it look? Well, you know, uh, optically, it's a 17.5% growth that we're seeing on DMART. The standalone revenue for the company is 13,250-odd crores. Quarter on quarter as well, there is a growth of 7.6%. But the reason why I would consider it soft is because, one, the revenue growth has been below what the company has been historically growing at. The four-year CAGR has been close to 21%. Quarter on quarter, the revenue growth, of course, has been led by the festive season. The festive season shifted in the third quarter this time around. And the store addition as well has been 11.5% 11, 11 year on year. So that's telling you that same store sales growth implied could be around 6, 6.5% on itself. The other softer aspect is the company has added just around five stores this uh, quarter. That means that this uh, year so far, they've added 17 stores. And that's a lot short of uh, their 40 store target of this year itself leaving nearly 23 stores to be added in the fourth quarter itself. What is it that is important to watch out for for DMART? The non-FMCG high margin business, uh, you know, that is still pre-COVID in their overall mix. And the stock, despite being an underperformer, is very close to its 52-week high. So maybe some red on DMART. All right, some red on DMART. Got it. Thanks a lot for that. Abhishek is with us to talk about Sham Metallics. Abhishek, morning. Uh, morning, Sonia. So, Sham Metallics uh, sources do tell us that uh, they have launched a uh, QIP. Uh, base issue size is about 1,152 crores along with green shoe option. It would be around 1,385.3 crores. So, the indicative price is about 576 per share, which is at a discount of 10.4% uh, to yesterday's closing price and about 3.5% discount uh, to SEBI flow price as well. Total dilution with green shoe option would be about 9.4%. The sole manager manager to this issue is ICSI Securities. Back to you. All right, Abhishek, thanks a lot uh, for that. So we'll keep an eye out on that stock. Well, I'm looking at two stocks, Moil as well as Hindustan Zinc. Let's start off with Moil. They have come out with their December production numbers as well as the update year to date, that is for the fiscal so far. In December, they've delivered the best ever production numbers of manganese ore. The production number has come in at around 1.85 lakh metric tons, which is up close to around 30%. And year to date as well, both their production and their sales numbers are up more than 40%. So going with green out there. Hindustan Zinc, that's the other one that we're looking at. They've come out with their operational update. The mined metal production was up close to around 7%. However, the integrated saleable metal, that was up only around a percent because of greater focus on lead in comparison to zinc. But the good news is silver, you know, that's shown a big growth of close to around 22%. We know pricing has been strong. And in fact, you know, if in case they go ahead and do some kind of corporate action where they s separate the silver business, you'll want to see a bigger ramp up out there. And that's precisely what's happened. So I know the dollar index has moved up overnight. But maybe if you look at these numbers, you'll say it's more good than bad. Okay, so dispatch numbers looking good for uh, the miners. Uh, back to Manglam then to discuss some of the block trades that happened yesterday. And VST was a really interesting one. So buyers and sell sellers, Manglam? Well, for VST Industries, you know, the stock was up 20% after the last trade yesterday. And we did, uh, you know, point out that there could be some h &I buying out there. HDFC MF was the one which sold about 2.5 lakh shares. So their stake is down from closer to 7% to just about 5 watt percent. DSPMF is the other seller. About 2.5% uh, was their stake earlier. That has come down to around 1.1%. But here's the interesting one. The buyer is Radha Kishan Damani. He's bought about 2.23 lakh shares. 
which amounts to about one and a half percent equity. The other one is SBI MF, which is what about a percent and a half in terms of equity as well. With this purchase, Radha Krishnan Dabani's stake in the company increases from near 33 percent to close to 34.34 percent. So that will be the key to watch now. Fundamentally, will there be recovery in their cigarette volumes and gaining in market share? Whether DSP MF and HDFC MF will sell more from here and will RKD family buy more? And if they do, would that perhaps trigger some sort of an open offer or not is something we'll be watching out for for VST. The other one is Strides, where Amansa Holdings has bought about 1.35% stake at close to 660 rupees per share. This looks like a fresh entry into the counter, so we'll watch out for that too. Okay, and now we all know why VST Industries was up 20% yesterday. Uh, RK Damani buying more stake there. Thanks a lot uh, for that, Mangalam. But uh, Abhishek is with us to give us some updates on the banking space. Abhishek, over to you. Uh, well, Sonia, to begin with, uh, Yes Bank came out with its operational update. Uh, they have lost market share on a YY basis. Sequentially, it looks like a good business update. So deposits are up 13.2% YY and about 3.2% sequentially. The CASA ratio has improved on a sequential basis by 25 basis point to about 29.7%. Advances growth is at uh, less than 12% YY, but sequential growth is more than 4%, which has actually helped the CD ratio improve on a sequential basis. Uh, Bank of Maharashtra, the Strong loan growth actually continued. Uh, deposits are up nearly 18% YOY and about 2.7% sequentially. They have lost out on CASA ratio, which has declined both YOY and quarter on quarter comparison. Uh, advances growth is at 20.3% YOY and about 3% sequentially. Uh, the CD ratio calculation shows that it has improved both YOY and quarter on quarter. Uh, CSB Bank, uh, they have focused on deposit growth, uh, which has knocked off the CD ratio, and uh, there could be pressure on net interest margin as per the provisional numbers. So deposits are up 20.65% YOY and about 7.5% sequentially. The CASA ratio has declined both YOY and quarter on quarter. There's a massive decline over there. Advances growth is at 22.6% YOY and about 1.8% sequentially. There is a dip in advances growth. If you take a look, uh, Q2 sequential growth was about 5.5%. So loan growth has moderated over there. The gold loan portfolio, that's trimmed down in terms of loan growth as well. Uh, sequential uh, growth in gold loans is just 2% uh, when compared to 5.5% uh, that they saw in Q2. CD ratio has knocked off uh, sharply, 83.6% in uh, Q3 FI24 when compared to 88.3% in the previous quarter. So there could be pressure on the net interest margin on account of the sharp rise in deposits. Back to you. Okay, all right, Abhishek Gauda, thanks very much. By the way, speaking of banks, uh, in general, we're watching out for the whole sector because of the RBI rule that came in with respect to dividends. And we'll discuss this in more detail as we go along. Essentially, what the RBI is saying is that now the amount of dividend that banks can pay out is going to be mapped with their NPA levels. And they've done a whole gradation. If a bank has zero NPA, then the dividend payout ratio can be as high as 50%. If the NPA is between, you know, 1% uh, but less than 2%, then there is a certain bracket in, in which, you know, they can pay out dividends. So basically, the amount of dividends being paid out by banks, PSU, private sector, uh, even foreign banks, the dividends that uh, local branches are paying to their parents, international parents, all of that is mapped to the amount of NPA level in the bank. How does this impact the sector? We'll discuss this, of course, uh, in more detail with our experts. But a quick recap of the list of top stocks to watch out for. The ones that have positive news flow around them are Shyam Metallics, Hindustan Zinc, Moil, VST Industries, Strides Pharma, Yes Bank, Bank of Maharashtra. Uh, that is on the back of positive news flow. Uh, Hero Moto, Avenue Supermarts and CSB Bank are the ones that we'll watch out for. Uh, they could potentially open out in the red. All right. Uh, well, those are a couple of stocks to watch, but there are a lot of brokerage notes that have come out this morning. Very interesting ones at that. So Sudarshan is joining in to tell us uh, what he's picking up. Sudarshan, over to you. So I'll be talking about 2024 outlook and today I have three sectors. First one is Jefferies on industrials. It has a buy call on 8 out of 10 stocks. Top picks are L&T, Siemens, Thermax and KI Industries and it has a sell call on BHEL and Cummins. It says operating leverage surprise should continue in 2024 but upcoming budget signaling government capex slowdown might be a potential negative. Indigenization focus and the capex should help industrial stocks. Next is Jefferies on banks. It likes Axis Bank, ICICI, Indusind, HDFC Bank and SBI. It says valuations are attractive for growth and return on equity. Banks can look for broad-based growth in SME and housing, but they will need to maneuver around slower deposit growth, rate cut and elections. 
Next one is Bernstein on power sector. It says, heading into an election year with valuations at 10-year highs, question is whether it is time to book profit or continue to hold. It still sees upside in NTPC. For NTPC, it sees catalysts in low delays in plant commissioning, order placement for new plants, and wins in renewable tenders and favorable regulations. Back to you. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Sudarshan. Well, let's uh, hop across to Manisha, who's joining us. Tell us what all has gone on with commodity and Manisha. Plenty, right, overnight? Oh, yes. And I'll start with the crude oil prices, where we have seen 2% of a decline coming in the overnight markets as the street shuts off on what's happening in Red Sea and decides to look at the sell-off and the risky assets. And we've seen equity markets decline in the last 24 hours. That was weighing on. And then there has been a rebound in dollar, in treasury yields, and that continued to weigh on as well. There is increasing global supplies from the non-OPEC producers, and that is telling you that there's going to be more crude available in 2024 than the demand can catch up with. Also, while there is a lot of happenings on Red Sea with Iran deploying warship, but there is, uh, you know, the analysts believe that it's unlikely that Iran will engage with U.S. warships and with that thought process, we have seen the premium come off as well. The OPEC and Allies' next meeting is in the month of Feb. That's going to be the next most watched event. And ahead of that, it also is about the U.S. non-farm payroll data that comes in on Friday. So ahead of that as well, we are looking at some jittery markets here. All right. Thanks a lot for that update, Manisha. Well, uh, moving on, the union budget is less than a month away. What is your wish list for the finance minister? Presenting the CNBC TV18 budget ballot box coming to a hotspot near you. We will be placing these ballot boxes at popular public spots like malls, colleges, theatres and others across major cities. We'll also be asking the newsmakers who drop into our studios for what their budget wish list is. So come join us, tell us what your top budget wish is from the Finance Minister. Drop your wish list at a CNBC TV 18 budget ballot box near you. We will compile them and present it to the Finance Minister before she presents the union budget.